A significant one. Will they be able to take this one to the line? Well, they're going to put it up to Team Astana. That's no doubt about that. And Mortensen, well, there's absolutely no way that anything was getting clear without him in it. <laughs> no, I think he decided this morning that he was getting into the, to the, uh, the break on this uh, final circuit, whether he, he would either make it or it would kill him. Incredible, Incredible energy being displayed by... Yeah, determination. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a rider that's really up for it, isn't he? Second rider in line is the 32-year-old Konstantin Sitsov of Belarus. Still a lot of looking around, looking over the shoulders to see whether they can uh, can see the peloton. I think uh, they need to really commit to this if they're going to try and pull away from, uh, from the peloton. Um, not going to be an easy job, though, with the might of Astana and uh, also MTN Quebec are now getting towards the front of this, uh, of the peloton, really wanting to make sure that they're there for, for the final. They obviously got a number of really good sprinters in here. Um, pretty much any, 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 uh, just about any rider out of their, their, their line-up here um, could have a go at this bunch of kick. So 9K left, just under. Two laps of this uh, four and a half kilometer circuit as uh, MTN Quebec come to the front and really string things out in a big way. And is there anything in that drag that you've seen on this finishing circuit, uh, Magnus, that suggests that this thing is, that this is going to be anything other than a bunch sprint? Um, I think there is an opportunity to, to, to actually go away clear and, and go clear on this one. Uh, it's going to take an awful lot of commitment from uh, from certain teams. Um, but it looks like there's a few uh, a few of the teams out here now who, who really want to try and make this into a bunch sprint and, and with that um, I think it will be difficult to uh, to to, um, to ride away. Well, four riders trying to ride away, but it's a narrow, narrow advantage indeed. It's about the biggest advantage we've seen lately, but, uh, well, that isn't saying much because nothing has been allowed up the road by Team Astana. Doing a wonderful job in defending Lars Bohm's narrow advantage. Six seconds he carried into this stage ahead of Lars hitting back. Of course, he's gained three seconds at the uh, second bonus sprint, so nine seconds is the advantage as Team Rompot are first across the gap to those four riders. That one's not going to work. Bor Argon fancy this one. Lotto Sadal getting involved too. And uh, meanwhile, Astana trying to keep the pace as high as possible in the bunch. And, well, the fastest possible attack that can be mustered manages to uh, forge an advantage of about two bike lengths. Yeah, it's not getting an awful, awful long way up the, up the road there, but uh, just watch how easy... Uh, Jakob Fulsang is sitting there in uh, just ahead of Lars Boom in the yellow jersey. Just uh, just follow that one without he really looking in too much, uh, like, he, like he was trying too hard. Uh, and, you know, there, there is an opportunity for someone like uh, like Fulsang to really put the pressure on going up this, this climb the last time and with that take the edge off the sprinters. And uh, Lars Boom, you know, he's uh, certainly no slouch, but he's now letting the, the, the gap open up to, uh, to Fulsang. Just trying to get a few other riders to get up there, get in between him. Well, that one's not going to work for Team Rompot. They've got John Paul Van Poppel in the car for them this week. Great sprinter in his own right. Will he be lining things up for a sprint later on? Just looking at uh, Gareth Sjolik up there. I, I think he's my man for today's, uh, today's uh, stage. Looking confident, looking cool, calm and collected, breathing through his nose of that little drag, so clearly he's got a bit of energy. Yeah, definitely. He's also very, uh, very happy to... Uh, when, when the circuits are hard, uh, he usually does very well and, and does finish off very well, so I think he's in a position there where uh, he's going to be difficult to beat today. Well, we've still got another lap up this, uh, up this drag after this, so there could be an opportunity to split things. And just as I said, of course, the, uh, there is this uh, lone rider, lone raider from Team Cult Energy. Well, the motorbike doesn't want to get in the way. Just shows you how quick that these uh, riders can corner. So important to stay as, uh, as far ahead as possible. Great, uh, great images for us, of course. I think that's Rasmus Guldhammer. Looks like him. Now, is this Goldhammer from Team Cult Energy that has uh, managed to open up a bit of daylight? This is the biggest advantage that anyone's had in probably the last 20 kilometers. And uh, that sustained period of attacking has, well, offered him a perfect opportunity and a wonderful piece of opportunism from him. 
Will it be enough? 6.6 .6 kilometers remaining. Another lap of this circuit as well, of course. Team Astana now going to the front once more. What have they got left to defend this? Well, the way that they're stringing out the bunch looks as if there's still plenty of energy in there as well. Michael Olsen is uh, definitely not there because this is a Cult Energy rider. Team Trefor uh, Blue Water is not represented in this lone rider move. And that's... Uh, Indeed is, as Magnus says, Rasmus Goldhammer, the Danish rider. Correction on the screen. Give him his due. He is absolutely flying, tearing up the tarmac, racing towards the finish in or who's will he be able to hang on clear of a charging bunch marshaled by the combined forces of uh, the Astana squad with a little bit of help from MTN Quebec and one or two other teams. This is a powerful sustained attack from Rasmus Goldhammer. Yeah, I kind of like to see the gap uh, that, that he has to the peloton here now because I think uh, it's going to be uh, the, the climb on the final lap that's going to make or break this uh, this particular attempt. Goldhammer is a very good climber though, but um, I wonder whether he's got anything to, uh, to just try and fend off the rest of the bunch with. Yeah, just how much energy is going into staying clear. Well, he's really opened up a significant advantage. Wouldn't it be nice to know exactly what it is? But he at least has the uh, honor of leading the field through to take the bell with just uh, five kilometers remaining. And there's the bunch behind with MTN Quebec. And uh, on the front, everyone looking around themselves. Happy, comfortable, satisfied? I'm not so sure about that. MTN Quebec are trying to get organized. Will it be for Sparagli? Will it be for Gerald Sielek perhaps to uh, launch an attack? And how big is the group going to be? Because I've no doubt that attacks are going to happen on this... Uh, on this um, 13 seconds, we understand, is the advantage for the lone attacker. That's, uh, that's the, a rough guesstimate. We've had the... Thumb in the air and the, uh, the counting the pieces of sand going through the hourglass, and we I was reckon it's about. My fingers. <laughs> oh, you've 13 fingers. Now, impressive stuff from uh, Magnus Backstep. I used a couple of toes as well. Yeah, he went to the digits down below. Gildamer absolutely in a world of hurt at the moment, but he's only four kilometres from the finish. Some lapped riders there. Just showing you how intense the racing action has been today. What a great stage we've had. 235 kilometers in total. We've done 231 and a bit of those already. Jansi van Rensburg is on the front for, uh, for Team NTN Quebec on the, on the right-hand side of the road, left-hand side of the picture, just trying to get things organized as Team Lotto Sudal try their luck off the front. Yeah, Jean de B, that looked like uh, from Lotto Sudal having a go. Just uh, trying to bridge up the gold hammer. He's still got a bit of a gap at this. It's going to be difficult. Yeah, the camera foreshortening the gap, but this is the uh, the toughest part of this drag, and there's still a little bit left. To be just uh, trying to jog across that gap, and it's massively intense. And riders are being shelled every minute now. It's going to be a smaller and smaller group that goes to the line. Looks as if it is going to be a group that goes to the line. Goldhammer is dragged back. Sean Deby now uh, forges out front, but how much of an advantage is he going to have as they crest the rise? Think of Saxo also to the fore as they have been throughout this stage. Could they pull a fast one on Team Astana after what's been a wonderful defensive job by the, uh, the team of the overall race leader, Lars Bohm? And indeed, they're leading the team classification for what that's worth. Just winching himself over the top of this drag, almost at the top, and then it'll be downhill to the line, but there's going to be absolutely nothing in it, and it looks increasingly like we're going to have a group uh, sprint for the line. Lars Petter Nordhag, though, isn't satisfied with that, and he's going to try and pull a group clear at the death in this second stage of the Tour of Denmark. Yeah, well, he's pulling all the major players with him, though. He's got Marcato on the wheel. The Linus Gerdeman is up there as well, doing a great ride. Lars Boom's looking very, very comfortable in, in the leader's jersey uh, up near the front here as well. Um, looks like uh, Juliensen is in there. So all the, all the sort of uh, general classification riders after yesterday are, are still very much near the front. The team that have been up front all day in the breakaway group courtesy of Matthias Krigbaum represented now on the front of the race with a narrow advantage just over two and a half kilometers Magnus, remaining Magnus Court 
And this is uh, Magnus Court Nielsen, who knows how to pull a fast one. He's, he's quick in a sprint from a small group himself, but he's not willing to go to the line with uh, some of the heavy hitter sprinters that are involved here today. So Magnus Court Nielsen is racing clear to glory in, uh, in Denmark this afternoon. Will he be able to hang on clear? It's looking good. Well, this is a good move. Uh, two and a half kilometers to go, and there's majority downhill. So uh, if he's got... Well, it's more a question of whether he can keep the, the cadence up uh, over this particular section. Well, he's absolutely... His, his legs are a blur at the moment, aren't they? He's spinning those cranks for all he's worth. He's inside the final two kilometers. Magnus Court Nielsen of Denmark, of the Danish national squad, normally racing with Orica Greenedge. He steals a little look over his shoulder and sees that the bunch are chasing behind with one mile remaining. 1500 meters of racing <laughs> one kilometer rate <laughs> remaining there but uh yeah he's still holding on to uh, to to that lead yeah and it's uh, anything between a kilometer and 1300 meters i think he'd prefer it was 900 meters now magnus court nielsen is absolutely dying as zemti and quebec had tried to go to the front to set something up astan is sitting on their wheel as they uh, try to get sure look on the front trying to do the lead out for uh uh, what I would believe being Bosenhagen. Yeah, Bosenhagen, surely the protected right. He's sitting third in uh, in the wheels there as well. Sparagli is there to do a job for them as well. And Magnus Court Nielsen is called to account. He's dragged back at the death as they go through the final turn with just what? About 400 metres remaining in stage two of the Tour of Denmark. Going for the line. Gerald Sielak has done his lead out as best he can. And now it is Edvald Bosenhagen that uh, is coming off the wheel and going for the line as Lars Bohm is in great position to try and defend his jersey. Lars Bowman, on the left-hand side of picture is not going to get the stage victory. Edvald Bosenhagen, though, is charging for glory, and he gets the win for MT Quebec. He gets his arm in the air as uh, Edvald Bosenhagen takes victory, and it looks like a 1-2 for MT Quebec team. What an amazing performance from the African registered squad, but it's the Norwegian national road race champion that takes victory on stage two of the Tour of Denmark. Riders still making their way in after what's uh, been a very, very tough day out. Not a great piece of course design because that uh, kept the issue in doubt right the way to the line. What a fantastic scrap that was. And uh, the MTN Quebec squad celebrate a 1-2 victory for uh, Edvald Bosenhagen. I think it could well have been Christian Sparagli that got up to get second on the line. Great yeah. celebration. Well, that's a leader and a half, I'd say, from uh, from Bosenhagen, who was leading Sparagli out for, for the sprint. And they forgot and, uh, to stop. Forgot to stop. Well, there's no point in the slowing down, is there? Um, you know, if you if you got the if you got the speed up, then then you can hold it to the line and just uh, keep it going. Uh, great work by Jolik as well, doing uh, taking them into the final corner there. And uh, yeah, awesome job by uh, MTN Quebec. Yeah, forearms in the air after that one. Absolutely perfect stuff. As uh, Edvard Bosenhagen.